good Sunday morning. It's time for more Clubhouse Chatter. Here's Normore Dead. That's right. Welcome to uh, this beautiful Sunday morning up here in the Eola Hills in uh, outside of Amity, Oregon. And uh, once again, I'm Norm Ordez, and that is Brian Erickson, a trusty producer over there, the captain of the ship. And our guest this morning is Houston Astros 1989 number one draft pick, Jeff Juden. Jeff, good morning. Good morning, guys. How's it going? It's going well. We got great weather, and uh, it's not morning over where you're at. But, uh, man, how's it going? Yeah. yeah, it's great out here. A beautiful day. I'm at the ballpark right now. My kids are uh, in a home run contest there for charity, local charity here. So, uh, yeah, beautiful day, man. We've had a great weekend so far. So, Jeff Juden, the pride of Salem, Massachusetts. So, we were discussing how we live about 20 miles from Salem, Oregon, and and we were trying to figure out which is the Salem, other Salem. And we figured we're the other Salem because Salem, Massachusetts is probably a heck of a lot older than Salem, Oregon. <laughs> and so... Well, it the time of year, man. We got more witches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that is that is what, you know, that was one of my questions for you. So you went to Salem High School, which their mascot is a witch. Now, with all this fallout from the mascots, you know, being Native American, you know, there's Sun Devils kind of getting, did, did Salem High School ever get any bad rap for having a witch as their mascot? Yeah, no, no, the witch of the town, she's okay with it, you know. She shops at the local grocery stores with everybody else, so, <laughs> you know, she's part of the crew. So you have one of the most, I, I think, you know, at least as a baseball card collector for me, one of the most more iconic cards and uh, that I remember, um, and that is the Topps number one draft pick with you there. Uh, I believe that was the 80, the 89 the 90 card, I think. And uh, it's got you and your Salem Witches uh, uniform. And, um, man, you know, I, that, that top set was pretty fun. What was your first memory of being on a baseball card? Well, um, you know, after opening a whole bunch of packs as, kids, as a kid, you know, I uh, found it to be kind of surreal, you know, to be honest. Uh, opening up some packs in the kitchen and came across one for the first time and uh you know it was it took a while to sink in you know and um it was a real cool feeling cool experience so you were drafted by the astros in 1989 number one 12th pick overall let's walk through that experience did you one did you know that the astros were going to draft you and Tell us a little bit about that experience. How did they, because this was before internet and everything else, and, um, you know, and so they did it, did they do it by mail, telegram, telephone? Well, they did it by telephone, and I uh, got a phone call, and they announced that I was a 12th pick. I got a call earlier by the Seattle Mariners, and they wanted to pick me third, but I wanted to hit and play for the National League team, so I dropped down to 12th. Uh, though overall, I was the third highest paid player in 1989 draft. Okay. It was the first year. Yeah, it was the first year that Ben McDonald made a million dollars and that any player ever made a million dollars with a sign bonus was Ben McDonald. So and with that was a big thing for the baseball. Right. Players. With your signing bonus, what was, what was I know, and – so Ben McDonald got a million dollars, I mean, which is nothing compared to what it is today. Um, what was the first thing that you bought with your your draft pick, your bonus money? Did you buy a car? Yeah, well, you... my, yeah, I bought a car, man. I bought a brand new IROC Z28 with T tops nice. and a 5.7 liter engine, and yeah, man, it was great. I put 18 inch rims on it, man. Big 12 inch speakers in it. You know, I was I was rocking down the road, man. You know, and uh, it was great because I never had a car in high school. I was a kid walking to school or running to school every day. You know, my job was a stock boy and a dishwasher on the weekends. 
you know, to go from making five bucks an hour washing dishes, you know, at a seafood restaurant to, you know, being able to afford my own car like that was real nice. So you played with a number of teams, and do you do you have a favorite team that an organization that you played for, or will it always be the Astros because they drafted you? You know, I, I enjoyed playing in most all the places. You know, I mean, you know, the people were great everywhere I went. You know, some places were tougher than others, but you know, I can appreciate and respect some tough love at times too. So. Uh, you know, as far as teammates and stuff like that, um, you know, one of my favorite teams was the Montreal Expos. And the guys there felt like they would run through a wall for me, you know, and, and some of them did. So, you know, I had a lot of love, a lot of support from those guys. And, uh, you know, the Indians was a great team, too, with Dave Justice and Oral Hershiser and, you know, Manny Ramirez and Jim Tomey and Sandy Alomar Jr., all these guys. You know, I was blessed and fortunate enough to play with all these great players, so I mean, it was really awesome all the way around. Is is there one player in not you know you know not talking about Jim Tomey or Manny Ramirez? Is there one player that stands out that for whatever reason didn't make it very far that you thought was going to make it? You know, whether it be for injuries or burnout or whatever. Well, there was a teammate of mine that I mean, I believe he made it at this point as a coach. But you know, as far as work, a guy that worked harder than anybody, a guy that would hit a pistol back to the pitcher and be sprinting, you know, ass over elbows to first base trying to get there. You know, it was a guy named Joe Mikulik, and mm-hmm. he used to he used to uh, put your stands and take you know take fly socks around his head to say never surrender. Hmm. You know, and, uh, you know, he, he was a real motivating guy in, in our championship team out there in the, for the Coast League, you know, in 91. So, he, uh, you know, he was a guy that I always, you know, wanted to see get a shot, you know, uh, because of how hard he worked and his, you know, great leadership. People don't realize it, it's it's a grind and you know there's been a lot of great ball players for whatever reason that 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 never made it you know you look at you know number one draft pick of the Yankees you know Taylor you know early you know the early 90s late 80s early 90s and you know injuries derailed a career and talk about the grind a little bit on you know I mean it, it takes a lot of dedicated hard work to get to where you were yeah I agree you know I spent my whole life training to be a hockey player spending a lot of time on the ice growing up you know in baseball I had a surgery an elbow surgery in 94 which was relatively early in my career you know back then you know it was tape and aspirin to it suck it up and go get them you know nobody really recognized uh, you know the injuries and so after that, yeah, I had to battle back and go through rehab, you know, and, and you know all that kind of stuff just to get back out on the field. And um, I worked hard. I didn't take but a couple of weeks off every year. You know, I had to go in and earn my job every year. I was never given a multi-year contract, so I had to make the team every year that I went into camp. And uh, so, you know, I always tried my best to be ready. Well. Or, I've hired personal trainers. Bobby McGuire was my trainer. Show me the money. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's funny, man. You know, I swear to God, they wrote some movies about him, you know, on the side. Just for fun. <laughs> you know, for funny. But, uh, you know, but it's all good, man. You know, on a beautiful day in paradise. What was the highlight of your career? Well, the highlight of my career probably was my first victory when I was pitching with the Phillies where um, I got my first complete game. It was for my mom's birthday. I told her I'd go out and get her a win for the for, uh, for her birthday. So they were in the stands and stuff. And, uh, yeah, we were pitching. I was pitching against Hideo Nomo when he came to town there, the first guy from Japan there to play in the uh, big leagues there. He brought a big entourage with him. And, <laughs> and everything so it was kind of a good crowd and about 45,000 and we knocked him out in the fourth inning and I had a grand slam off of John Cummins 
which was during a home run inning, and then ended up winning a lady and her family ten thousand dollars. She was recently widowed, lost her husband, so it was a, a special moment for them. I got to meet them and and ask them, you know, how they heard it. You know, I guess the kid, the kid was watching the game. The kids were watching the game. She was doing the dishes, you know, and then all of a sudden, the youngest boy said, they called our name, they called our name, and she goes, oh, who, who, you know, who's hitting, who's hitting, and the kid goes, oh, man, it's the pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was bummed out, so she's like, well, man, it's cool, it's cool, it's okay, we didn't care, it was cool that, you know, our name was called, and, you know, she was a real sweetheart, you know, and the kids, you know, you know, they were real nice. So it was a it was a great experience. Got to, you know, get the game ball to my mom and you know, give her they gave me a watch and stuff like that for play of the game and you know, so it was, that that was really a, a memorable experience for me getting started, you know. What was the best advice that anybody has ever given you? And what would be the best advice that you can give a younger ball player, you know, little leaguer or whatever coming up? Well, uh, work hard. Uh, when you're out there, have a plan. Know what you want to do before it happens. So when the ball comes to you or you're up at the plate, you're ready. You know, don't uh, play on your heels. We play the game on the toes. You know, up in the balls of our feet. And uh, you got to get it before it gets you. <laughs> <laughs> so now you are the you're the Northeast regional director for Stars and Stripes Sports. Tell us a little bit about Stars and Stripes Sports. Stars and Stripes Sports, yes, we're in the sports testing, recruiting, development, um, looking to put together a state team here and around the region, regional team, you know, different state teams. I've got seven states, including New York and Connecticut, Rhode Island and New England. So um, just getting started. I just got this position last week. So um, I brought on a couple, bringing on a couple area directors. I brought on one already. I'm going to announce another one at the beginning of this week. Um, Eric Cormier, who is a pitcher with the Red Sox there out of Milford, Mass. and stuff. Been a friend of mine for a good time now. And so I'm um, excited to have him on board with us. And yeah, it's been. Um, it's been a project that I wanted to bring here to this area for a long time. You know, I've been working for a few years at it. Kelly Ernst, who's the president of our company, and he's done a great job with this Winter World Series Classic down in Orlando, where we get all the, you know, the different states coming together to play each other. It's a great experience with the Orlando World Center Marriott, it's the largest World Center Marriott down in the world. Two to three hundred foot water slides for the kids. You know, we, we go to Disney for a night where it's just the kids in the park and they shut it down for us. So, you know, it's a special time and a special thing. And, you know, uh, I'm excited to get started with it. Nice. So let's turn our attention to a little bit about music. So you play and you've actually now, have you recorded any albums? I have a CD I recorded in 2001. There it came out just a little bit after 9-11. So, uh, yeah, I was doing a lot of playing back then. It's called Anything You Want to Be, you know, just be. So um, it's 12 songs. I played a solo on it that I call Beer Spiller's solo where I'm on the guitar. Um, otherwise, I'm the rhythm guitar player and the singer, and I wrote the music. So it's um, it's cool. Check it out. It's free. You can pull it up. I'm going to make hard copies at some point and uh, get myself together with a foundation I'm trying to do a lot here you know all at once and you know it's coming along but you know not, not you know on on god's time you know what i mean give old peter gammons a call and maybe he'll play with you i'd love to have peter play man i know he's a great bass player it'd be awesome so one more question before we let you go and let's we'll keep it with music so you're you're uh basically a child of the 80s there and so let's go with your top five 80s songs. Wow, man. Uh, <laughs> top five 80s songs. Man, you stumped me with that one. 80s songs. Molly Cruz, you know, uh, Wild Side. Okay. The 80s. Yeah, Wild Side, Molly Crew. Uh, Give Me All Your Loving by White Snake. 
Okay. I like that one, man. I like Bay Rock. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's 80s, huh? Mm. Uh, man, I'm trying to think. When did Freebird come out? Uh, Freebird was probably Freebird was in the seventies, but you know, hey, we'll count it. I mean, that's a, you know, you know Skinner man, I'll, just I'll tell you what I'm, what I'm playing these days, man, is I'm playing some Stone Temple Pilots. I'm playing some Plush. I'm playing some Led Zeppelin. I'm playing some ACDC. You know, I love ACDC. You know, Pearl Jam, Earl Smith. You know, all those guys, man. You know, Billy Joel. You know, Tom Petty. So you're you know, a rocker. Guys, you're a rocker man. then. I'm a rocker, you know. I did a show in Vegas, man, in 2000, Benefit Jimmy Fund, in memory of my sister Kim, who passed a neuroblastoma as a child. And, you know, I had a great support. Ozzy Smith came out and sang gospel with his uncle for me. And, you know, Tyler Green, another pitcher, came out and did country. And I had Dave Mustaine come out and do some mega death, you know, heavy. He told me, just play an F, man, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, yeah. That's it. Just you know, give me the rhythm, man. You know, rock, let's rock this. Let's crush it. You know, so uh, you know, Mark Rivera with Billy Joel, the sax guitarist, man, was a great help for me because I didn't really know what I was doing. You know, trying to organize all these musicians for the show, at the rehearsal and stuff. And Eddie Money played a, a nice help and role there too, kind of helped me organize musicians. And you know, Tamara Chambliss was married to Jason. Mm-hmm. Photo of Chicago, you know, all kinds of good stuff. What are these honkers, man, coming on the air? Do you guys do that honking stuff? Is that part of your gig? Is there a noise? That no, you... that's that's no, his phone going that's off. My phone go, my phone going <laughs> off. I forgot to silence it. This I didn't forgot to get it off of vibration. So. <laughs> so. All right, man. Because I'm wondering, I'm wondering if I'm talking too much, man. No, no you know, we're you're not fine. that advanced yet. <laughs> I'm supposed to be talking, right? It's a talk show. Yeah, no, yeah. we're just two guys here in Oregon who who like to, you know, got the passion for the game of baseball, and I like to, you know, with my show, you know, I'd like to bring on different guests, and, you know, as long as you got the passion of baseball and kind of kind of steered away a little bit from baseball, doing other things, and you know, I want to help grow the game of baseball, and. I'm, I'm coaching my seven-year-old nephew's team this this summer and just having the time of my life again, you know, coaching those little guys, you know, trying to help instill, you know, that passion for the game. And uh, I did my job yesterday. I had a, I got a four-year-old bat boy and uh, he's a brother of a kid and I got him in that bat during a game last night and he got a hit off of a coach pitch and he kind of froze. He didn't know what to do. But he's four, and the, his his mom contacted me this morning and said that he slept with his game ball, and he still hasn't quit talking about it. So my job there is done. I, I, I brought a kid over to the baseball side, and uh, that's pretty awesome. That's great, man. Way to go. Yeah, that's you know, that's what my goal is, man. You know, I want to bring the excitement to the area again, you know, over there. A lot of a lot of the kids, when I come back, are, you know, parents are telling me they're playing lacrosse, man. And, you know, I just don't understand it. So I'm here to, I'm here to bring, uh, bring the passion and bring the energy and uh, open up some opportunities for these folks here in this region. So, you know, I'm, I'm working hard every day at it, and, uh, you know, I'm excited for what's to come. So, Jeff, where do we go for more information on Stars and Stripes? Is there, like, a website we can go to? It's Stars and Stripes Sports, okay? Yeah, that's the name, not okay. just Stars and Stripes. So, starsandstripesports.com, okay? That's what it is. Yeah. All right. Once so, again, can't, Mr. You can't forget the sports, man. Mr. So, Jeff June. Yeah. Jeff, thank you for taking your time on this Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon for you. And uh, let's do this again sometime soon. All right, Norm. Hey, man. Appreciate you having me. Good luck, guys. All, all right. right. All the best to you. All right. Thanks, Jeff. All right. All right. Thank all right. You. Bye. Once again, Mr. Jeff Juden. So, hey, I'm really interested in to listening to some of his, uh, to checking out his music. We are going to have to check that out because um, I have a, an idea. It's rocking, up-tempo. Oh, yeah. Um, you name it. it and it's going to be good. The guy bought an IROC Z28 <laughs> or whatever. I mean, how cool was that back in the early uh, you know, 90s, late and 80s? So, he, so Jeff is a big guy. He's like 6'7". 
And so he came, he was in an era where there weren't too many tall pitchers like that. I mean, you had Randy Johnson, but I mean, who else did you have that were big like that? That was before baseball, you know, made an emphasis on the big, tall, six, six and above pitchers. Right. And so he had a power arm and, uh, you know, he played nine years in the bigs. He had a solid career. And, you know, he's drawing up probably a nice little pension. And um, we were checking out the pensions before <laughs> before the deal and uh, the show. And they, they get some good ones. It's a good thing. So, once again, I'm Norm. Hey, that's Brian. We got the College World Series going on. So, I believe Oklahoma State... Oklahoma State plays Arizona today. And I think the Coastal Carolina plays TCU. The winners of those games will play for the championship. I'm starting on Tuesday, I believe. Coastal, did, Coastal did, it happen Car- did it happen yesterday, though, those games? No, Coastal Carolina beat TCU yesterday. They have to play again. Okay. And so um, Arizona might have won their way in. I, I don't know. But from what I read, the way I read it was Arizona was playing um, Oklahoma State, and then Coastal Carolina was playing TCU again today. And so check that out. College World Series. Hey, if you're over in Omaha – Omaha, Omaha, Omaha. Check out the baseball isms display. They have a great display over there. They're selling some of their goods. Baseball isms is one of our sponsors. If you like the hat that I'm wearing, baseball isms, you know, go over, check them out. Tell them Norman Bryan from Clubhouse Chatter sent you over. Back in Oregon. Back in Oregon. There's so, a possible discount involved. So when you possible. watch Arizona and Coastal Carolina play in the world series you can just go mention is it yes it is so coastal carolina and arizona for all the marbles you've been working way too hard how about how about that <laughs> you know arizona pac 10 didn't even win the pac 12 i think they had a 9-1 shot when they got there when they had all the teams the eight teams ranked they were 9-1 to make it with only eight teams coastal carolina 12-1 and in coastal carolina yeah who would have thought so I'm kind of oh man, go Pac-12. I, no, yes, no, go Pac-12. I want Coastal Carolina. I want Pac-12 because Pac-12 beat each other up all year long. The deal is real. Coastal Pac-12. Carolina. So I hope it goes three. I hope it goes stretches out to the three, and I hope Coast, Coastal Carolina wins it. If Arizona wins it, I'm not going to cry about it because of the Pac-12. There you go. But I'll take that. I'm Brian Norm, that's Brian, and uh, it has been a long work week for me. So um, we are sponsored by dun, 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 dun. baseballisms.com. Check them out. Hey, they're over there in Omaha, Nebraska. Check out Kalen and the crew, and uh, tell them Norman Brian from Clubhouse Chatter in Oregon sent you. Also sponsored by BaseballDudes.com Chris Gazelle up there in Vancouver, Washington to be the best, you must train like the best Mitch Canham Skipper Mitch Canham led the Clinton Lumber Kings to the first half title so they're in the playoffs so Mitch Canham based by pros, his dad Mark Canham with MDM Designs Mark is down there in Filer, Idaho just got done with the uh Gordy's Highway Music Highway 30 Music Fest. And uh, we stream live on yamhilltoday.com every time we stream live. Hey, we're looking for sponsors. If you want to sponsor the show, shoot me an email, normbo18 at gmail.com. We are on Twitter, Clubhouse Chatter 1T, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes. Where else are we on? MLB.com, blogs, Clubhouse Chatter. Once again, I'm Norm. That's Brian. Tony Torcado is MIA, and uh, he will be coaching this next Sunday, July 3rd, in the Futures game over at Volcano Stadium. So we're hoping to catch up with him then. So, hey, thanks for spending Sunday morning with us, and uh, we will see you soon.